All right, I'll call the meeting to order. This is the regular meeting of December 4th of the East Slime uh, Board of Selectmen. If you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. No additional consent uh, items, agenda items? No. Delegations, anyone? Anyone for delegations? Right. Approval of the minutes, uh, November 6th, a whole long time ago. Yes, I'll move to, uh, we'll start with the public hearing, move to approve the public hearing minutes of November 6th, 2019 is submitted. Second. Motion and seconded. Any comments or corrections? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? This is a regular meeting. I'll move to approve the regular meeting minutes of November 6, 2019 as submitted. Second. Um, any comments or corrections? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Consent ca calendar. I'll move to approve the consent calendar for the meeting of December 4th, 2019 in the amount of $16,592.20. Second. Comments, corrections? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. Onward to new business. Special appropriation of $5,590,000 for well 1A and well Six for the water and sewer, well, for the water department. And Joe Braga is uh, here to speak to that. Good evening. Um, so um, it, it, I'm going to kind of take a three prong attack. The first prong is to um, this project sounds probably very familiar to some of you, so you know why are we here, but I, I do want to kind of give the quick, you know, why, what, what this project is about. The second part is why am I back, or what, what is, and then the third is. Um, what's the impact to uh, ratepayers, uh, not to necessarily the taxpayers, but they're kind of in the same pile. So the first is, um, this is, um, as uh, Mark said, um, it's for well 1A, uh, it's uh, well 6. Um, East Line Water Department has seven wells in town, um, throughout the town. The, t the two primary wells in the middle of the town, right by the East Line Middle School. Well 1A is up by the north end of the, uh, as you would call it, the Little League Field 2. Um, over by the industrial park and well six is the one by the youth football field um, those are two as a, that's what these two projects are uh, this is what that's what this project is um, what, what we've been having a problem with and this this project has been in the works for two three years now is we've been having um, an issue with water quality and um, there's some discolored water in town it's it's because that well 1a which is the one on the north side of uh, the baseball fields is coming up with a higher um, iron and manganese. It's kind of a naturally forming uh, mineral, but it's, um, you know, a few years ago, it was starting to become prob problematic. And now the, the Connecticut D Department of Public Health has been lowering the thresholds um, that of, of uh, giving notifications to the uh, water customers. So this project has to move forward. So that's basically what the project is, is taking well 1A, which does not have filtration for um, iron and manganese, and piping it over to well 6 which is going to be right, it's uh, right on the road between uh, the back side of middle school. There's the road there between that and Lily Fields piping the water over. And we have to expand um, because right now the uh, well six is, is capacity with filters. So we have to expand the building and have a put in an extra filter. So that's basically the gist of why the original project. So we were here in front of this board, um, if you recall, but it was 13 months ago. It was November 2018 to ask for money. So that's the first part. That's the general, and I, I can I'll answer questions, but I'd like to go through this first. That's, that was the project. We went through and asked for $4.6 million. But then, slow down. at the time, the, engineer, the, the, the uh, engineers that were the consultant engineers that put it together gave us an engineering estimate. And that engineering estimate was for $4.6 million. So we went through the process, went in front of this Board of Selectmen, Board of Finance town meeting. Um, that was before they actually did the full design. So uh, they, they, uh, they finished the design. Um, I do have a timeline that um, in, uh, we advertised it for bidding in uh, May. It sounds like a long time from getting approval in November, but um, when you deal with the Department of Public Health, it takes a while to get approvals and get everything to go. So in May, we put it out to bid. We got one bidder, and it was a million dollars <coughs> over budget. 
So we're like, this doesn't make sense. So we went back to the drawing board, went back in front of the Water and Sewer Commission, and um, we uh, fine-tuned some things. We, we brought, put some alternates. We, put, we, made, we tried to uh, engineer the pro uh, uh, value engineer the project to make sure it could come in lower. We rebid it in uh, October, and we, um, in November we got bids. Now this time we got three, three bidders, and the project was um, 200,000 less than the original bid, but it's still 900,000 over what we originally had been told by the engineer. So that's, that's kind of why we're here today, is that instead of at the time that we got the appropriation from the town of 4.64 million, um, the, the, the project to do it right, we have a reputable contractor right now, as I said, at three bids. The, the first and the second bid um, on this project were within $26,000, so it, 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 was a, it was a good bid. It's, that's unfortunately the number. Um, I've always said it when it comes to water and sewer projects. If you think it costs this, put an extra zero on it because it just seems everything costs really expensive in this field. So that was the project. That's the reason why we're in front of you. And then, okay, so we go through the Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance, hopefully through this process, is what is the impact on, I mean, because we're borrowing money, what is the impact on our residents? Well, I, I will say it, it's not technically a residence because it's not taxpayer money, it's, re, it's, it's the rate payers, but you know, I, I'm a taxpayer and I'm a rate payer, so I mean, it is still the people's money, that's why we're here. So what I did is I looked at, we did it before this project and I did it after the project, is we looked at the water budget, the operating budget for the next 10 years. We did an analysis of the expenditures and the revenues and we took a look at it. Now one of the things that um, we wisely did on the Water and Sewer Commission is uh, we had our debt principal payments were uh, starting to slow down a little bit, so we built in a debt reserve in the last year, and even so, this project is going a year later than it was. So we're socking all that money aside to help meter out over over the next few years, so that we can try what we're what we told the um, the rate payers is we're trying to target a no more than a two percent rate increase for the next ten years, and based on the analysis that I did. Um, Ask, asking for an extra 950,000 corresponds to about 60,000 a year. Putting that into the analysis, it still shouldn't have an impact on the rate pair. So we, we're still saying the same thing as we're trying to keep to that 2%, no more than 2% rate increase. Last thing is I did an analysis of the rates of East Lime water rates, um, Groton uh, utility rates, and Norwich public utilities, because those are very easy to come out. And our rates are still much lower than theirs. Um, uh, we, we are, interestingly enough, our rates go up as you use more. Those other utilities, the rates go down, go down as you use more, so there is a flipping point. It's about 200,000 gallons over six months that after you get over 200,000 gallons in six months, it costs more in the town of East Lyme. But that's, anyone that's using 200,000 gallons over six months is irrigating and doing some serious uses of water. Well, I'd say 75% of our customers are 40,000, I mean, I'm talking over six months, 40,000 gallons or less. So it shouldn't have an impact on our rate payers. We did the analysis, we, we looked at the numbers. We really need to move forward this project. Um, the water discoloration is a big issue. You hear about it on social media. You, you, you hear a lot of people every time there's a, a fire in this town, they open up a hydrant, water main break, it stirs up all the iron and manganese in the system. That's the discoloration and we really have to address it by moving forward with this project. So that's the three prong attack I open up now to questions. Other questions? Sure. I'd like to have a motion on the floor first. Sure. It's a resolution, oh, yeah. right, for bonding. I'll move the following. Resolved. Section 1, the resolution entitled Resolution Appropriating $4,640,000 for the construction of modifications and upgrades to the East Lime Well 1A and Well 6 water treatment plant project and authorizing the issuance of $4,640,000 bonds of the town to meet said appropriation pending the issuance thereof, the making of temporary borrowings for such purpose, adopted a special town meeting held January 2nd, 2019, the resolution, is hereby amended to increase the amount of each of the appropriation and the bond authorization set forth therein by $950,000 from $4,640,000 to $5,590,000. Section two, section one of the resolution is hereby amended 
by deleting said section and substituting the following in lieu thereof, thereby making said section read as follows. Section one, the sum of $5,590,000 is appropriated for the construction of modifications and upgrades to the East Lime Well 1A and Well 6 water treatment plan project, including but not limited to I, one, pumping of Well 1A to the Well 6 water treatment plant and filtering to remove iron and manganese via a new 12 inch diameter ductile iron raw water transmission main. Two, installation of a fourth green sand plus filter vessel. Three, rehabilitation of three existing filters, including replacement with new green sand plus filter media and under drains. Four, repainting of the existing process piping. Five, construction of an addition to the water treatment plant to accommodate the installation of the fourth green sand plus filter vessel. Six, replacement of the water quality analyzers. Seven, upgrades of the existing chemical feed systems. Eight, replacing the vertical turbine pumps for well 1A and well 6. Nine, upgrading the existing irrigation well adjacent to the well 6 water treatment plant. And 10, installation of a new building fire sprinkler system, permanent standby power generator, and an upgrade to the existing heating and ventilation system, all in substantial accordance with the Wells 1A and 2A treatment basis of design report dated August 2016 as prepared by Ty and Bond, as amended from time to time and for engineering technical support services during construction, administrative, printing, legal and financing costs of issuance related thereto, collectively the project, set appropriation to be inclusive of any and all state and federal grants in aid and or subsidies in aid thereof. Section three, the first sentence of section two of the resolu resolution is hereby amended by increasing the amount of bonds therein authorized to be issued by $950,000 from $4,460,000 to $5,590,000, thereby making said sentence read as follows. Section two, to meet said appropriation $5,590,000 bonds of the town or so much thereof as shall be necessary for such purpose, shall be issued maturing not later than the maximum maturity permitted by the General Statutes of Connecticut, revision of 1958 as amended from time to time, the Connecticut General Statutes. Section four, section six of the resolution shall be applicable to the appropriation added by this resolution as of the date of adoption of this resolution. That's the motion. Second. Motion has been made. Now, are there any comments or questions <coughs> for Mr. Bergala? I won't be able to talk for a while, so thank yes. you. Yes. That's very good. You, you go first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, go in order. Okay. Uh, so you already went out to bid. Have, we haven't accepted a bid yet. You're coming back to us. We, you don't anticipate going out. You have the bids. Yeah, now they're, you they're, they're holding the bids. They're holding the bids. We're not expecting they're still to go back valid. Out. Yep. The, the low bidder is a qualified contractor. They're, they're required by the contract, by the bidding documents, to hold the bids for 90 days or whatever, 120 days. Okay. Okay. When when would you anticipate in construction? Uh, March. We'd be getting in, uh, into it in March. Okay. So in the spring. And it'll be about a year of construction. One year of construction. Okay. And my understanding was when we did this before, it was just obviously to improve the quality of water, but now the state is, is about to mandate new levels of manganese in water. Is that the correct? state has dropped their threshold. Threshold. On, and so it's, you have to start sending out letters to uh, yep. your customers when it goes over, exceeds the thresholds. And before, we were never exceeded those, but we're starting to in that general perimeter of that uh, well 1A because there's no filtration of iron and manganese on that well. Right, okay. And Brad, I went over with, with Brad the numbers and it looks like it peaks at certain, it doesn't look like it's increased much, but it just it peaks at certain times and letters have had to go out because of the lowering of the threshold. Correct. Correct. Okay. That's my understanding. I just wanted to make sure it's correct. Sure. I will pass to you. Okay. Uh, of the three companies that have uh, bid on the project at this point, are any of the three located in Connecticut, headquarters in Connecticut? I don't believe so. Did we receive any bids from Connecticut companies? We did not. 
It's R.H. White. They're out of Massachusetts. C.H. Nickerson and Company. Footnote had nothing to do with. No relation. No relation. Um, I do not know where. I believe they're in Massachusetts in Damato Construction. Um, Isn't that Nickerson Company from the other side of the state? Seriously. Oh wait, here. Uh, We've used them before. First of all, second of all, th th we did get a bit internal uh, from in inside the state. Um, the first go around, um, the, but that company is now going out of business. Not going out of business, but they're retiring from business. Yeah, that's so, correct. Um, yeah, that, yeah that, the first bid was um, Carlin, Carlin Contracting and Waterford, and yeah, they're, they they're no longer or they're going out of business. So they, they obviously did not bid it. Okay, uh, but the notification to bid was sent to Connecticut companies. Oh, absolutely, okay. it was sent out to everyone. Uh, but by the DPH requirements, uh, you have to put it out to the world. Mm -hmm. You can't pick pick and choose contractors. And we did have a, bunch, a number of contractors that came for the uh, pre-bid meetings and some of that. We had three that bid it. Um, have we had do prior experience with any of these companies that did bid? Um, as Mr. Nickerson said, that the second bidder, we've... Um, had some experience. R.H. White is a very reputable company. They do uh, all the, uh, the the natural gas work for uh, in the local area in New London. So mm -hmm. I, I, I dealt with them in Stonington. I've They're seen their very, trucks. very re reputable contractor, and they are the low bidder. We're, we're very comfortable that they can do the job. Um, so, okay. Um, in the contract, will there be a time for this project to be, be completed? And if it's not completed by that time, there will be a penalty. Yes. And, and the, um, there's work at the well, well 1A, over by the industrial park. There's a lot of work by the well 6 that's over by the, um, the Lily B. Haynes. The transmission line is, is actually, we worked with a school. They have a window from when school gets out <coughs> to when school goes back in, and they need four or five weeks. We're still going to have sit down with the East Lime Little League and the youth football because we, we need to coordinate that, mm -hmm. but we have to give them a window to get in there and we're gonna sit down with those organizations, but we have to get this pipe through there and um, in, in that area and there's, you can't do it during school and you can't do it in April with, you know, when you have, you know, mm -hmm. 25 Will there be any on. disruption uh, in, in service to uh, any of the uh, residential properties? No, because it's just connecting the wells. Right now they're not okay. connected, so it doesn't take the wells offline. It just connects the two wells, so it's it's not going to be something that's going to have an impact on our um, the water usage around there. So some of our wells are coming in with a rather high listing uh, recording of salt in the water or chromium. Would the filters in this the filters that are going to be installed would they handle that as well? Uh, somewhat, but not totally. I mean, salt is a, is a becoming an issue. I was actually at a, a Yukon Public Works thing today where they're talking. I mean, it's 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 going on throughout the whole state. Mm -hmm. um, there's green pr snow pro efforts to try to reduce the amounts of salt, but these will these filter um, water filter plants don't typically take out salt. That's not what they do. So um, we're going to try to minimize the salt in the areas that are around the wells. Okay. So this has to come before the Board of Selectmen because we are the one we are the only ones that can finance the project bond. Correct. So <clears throat> you mentioned that the uh, Water and Sewer Commission has been, so to speak, salting away some money, no pun intended, uh, to go to uh, sort of lower the rate that taxpayers would have to pay. Uh, so the money that you've bankrolled, will any of that be contributed to paying off the debt from the money that we're bonding? So by putting aside, um, last year the debt principal, I believe, was 525000 last fiscal year. Mm -hmm. This one, it's two, two, it's about 200000 less. We, we budgeted about the same amount to store away that 200000 in a debt reserve to meter it out so that when we bring in this project and it goes back up above what we had, it balances out that debt pr principle so that we can balance our budget and keep the rates pretty consistent instead of having the rates go up 5% down, 2%, one, we're trying to keep it even. So you, you asked a question of... Um, Whether or not that money, the money that you've bankrolled or yeah. saved, if, the, if that would then go towards retiring some of the bonding debt 
It's no, we don't have a. We don't have a. Uh, it's not like a, a, a cash account. No, it, it's yeah. it's just that we've paid down some of our debt, so this will. It's balancing out the debt payments, um, so yeah. that because debt payments aren't always consistent. They're mm -hmm. they're not always so. Sometimes in some years they're higher, some years they're lower. This basically that debt reserve puts it in, so you can balance out, so you can keep a steady budget instead of bouncing up right. and down. So it's not. But the, I mean, I've been here six years. The cash in the water department has not been plentiful. So um, anything we can do to build it up, like any organization needs to have a little bit of threshold. The other problem we have is we bill every six months. Uh, Groton Utilities and North, uh, um, uh, MPU, all these other utilities bill monthly. We have cash flow issues because we bill out in six, you know, and then six months all our cash goes down to we get really low, then we bill out. Oh, so it just, from a cash standpoint, we need to, that cash for operations. I understand. Um, I think that that's all of my questions. Oh, I know the uh, piping. Uh, this calls for repainting of the existing process piping. Um, what are the pipes constructed of? A ductile iron, I, I believe. Uh, are you talking like transmission pipes? Yes. Yeah, ductile iron. It says it, it was in. Okay. So that's the pipe that okay. comes between the. Uh, I think the painting is the painting is in the existing um, when it comes into the wells. Um, we have we have an existing well six and there's a lot of infrastructure in there. That well has got to be 15, 20 years old. So there's mm -hmm. part of this project is upgrading local. some of the some of the pipe work, the filters, and all the other stuff. And that's what was read by Mr. Siri. Well, the project is to uh, replace the filters to remove iron and manganese. So my question is, if you're not going to replace the piping and the piping is iron. Is this problem going to reoccur? No, it, it, it's apples and oranges. I mean, the the, the, the um, iron and magazine is coming from the water, so it's it's suspended mm -hmm. in there. Um, the pipe just doesn't break apart. This iron uh, ductile iron pipe, it's not like it breaks away and stuff like that. It's it's the iron and manganese coming from the actual source water, which is what is is going out into the system. It's, so it's it's not it's it's not the iron and magazine is not coming from the interiors of the pipes. It's coming from what's we're pumping out of the ground. I understand it's coming from the water, but if it's running through iron piping, it, it's 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 never really been an issue unless you're. It's an issue because we're pumping water that's high in iron and manganese. If we, um, New London water, when we bring water from New London and we have iron pipes, we don't have this issue because um, New London water does not have iron and manganese. It's higher in content of chlorine, so that's why in the northern sections of town, some people can complain on social media or something like that, the, the oh. difference of taste, because oh. it's coming from the lake up there. They don't have the iron and manganese, and if honestly, this pro if we didn't have this project, we're taking more, we took more water this year than ever from New London, because we're trying to keep the iron and manganese levels down by not running our wells, so we're taking New London water t until we can kind of get through this because we're trying to keep the iron and manganese levels lower in our system because once it gets in there you can't get it out unless you flush and you have to be constantly flushing the pipes and if you don't or if there's a water main break all of a sudden everyone calls up and says oh my water's dirty and uh, or discolored and so it, it, this is just a you, you circle your tail on this thing until you fix it and then you fix it by getting the source water and getting the iron and manganese filtered into the system and, we're gonna, and it's going to be a much better quality water and we won't have to take as much from the one Thank you. And Dan, I mean, uh, yeah, just uh, too, and one of the things too is the project engineer, just so everyone knows for this, is Ty and Bond, who we have a long history with. They were the project managers, I believe, for the uh, interconnection. Yeah, that's correct. And they also were involved when we had to redo the uh, pump station down on uh, uh, Main, St Main Street, uh, down by Dad's restaurant, with the valves and so forth like that. They were, I believe, involved in helping us procure the valves for that as well, weren't they? For um, uh, on the pump station, yeah, that was Western Samson. But that's, oh, that, that's right. That, that. that was for sewer. Okay, for water. They have a long yeah. history. We use Ty and Bond for our water projects, and we use Western Samson for our sewer projects. Different kind of specialties. But Ty and Bond is a reputable engineering firm. Uh, we went through a QBS process to select them as part of. The, I mean, everything when you go in this process has to be cross your T's, dot your I's. And that's why, unfortunately, when you look at the timeline, you guys approved this last November, and you're like, why are we here now? It takes three, four months to just get any kind of approval from the Department of Public Health. So as soon as you get the approval, then you send it to them, and then you, you don't hear back for three, four months. Then you put out the bid, then you gotta wait two months, then you gotta, it, it just, this process takes a while. That's why we're at the end of the process, we have the bids. If we can get this funding in place, we can go. 
we just have to get the um, and uh, one of the things that uh, Mr. Cargill, the utility engineer, gave me, and I, I tried to get he'll be at the board of finance meeting, but um, is uh, that they uh, they they've already uh, in support of this project and the DPH is, is fully on board with this project and, and the additional amount. It's just we have to go through the town process because this the town is backing in the full good faith of the town. Also, too, as I think uh, Joe mentioned, we when we did get that one bid in and it was a million over, it was the Water and Sewer <coughs> Commission's unanimous feeling that take the time and go out and bid with a couple of the uh, delete alts on there uh, so to see if we could get a better price and, and encourage more uh, people to bid, which we did, and it did bring it down a little, but not not what we had hoped. But yeah, the, the, first, the first bid, we gave them a window of from the end of October to Thanksgiving to do the transmission pipe. So if you give such a limited window that a contractor can do it, they're either going to bid it really high and try to hit a home run, or they're not going to bid it, and that's what happened. So everyone was like, oh, I'm not bidding that. I can't do it in three weeks in November. So that's not a time that they want to be doing. So we had to, we had to take out those restrictions to get it more of a competitively bid, and that's what we did. And it still came in. It was 250000 less than the original bid, but still 950000 more than what we had been told by the engineer would cost. I'm all set. Mr. Cunningham? I'm just curious, the, the filter media that they use, how often does that have to be replaced? Um, it's every few years. I mean, uh, the, it's, it's not, a, I want to say it's four or five years. Um, it's, 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 it, it can be an expensive thing, but that's done through the water department, through operations and stuff like that. So you wouldn't be coming in for a, se a separate no, no, request? No, 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 no that's not, no, we handle that, we handle that separately. This is, this yeah. is a big project. I right. mean, as far as um, changing out the filter media is something that we do on a regular basis. We have it at other wells. We wouldn't be in front of you for if it was a changing out the filter media. But when it comes to, I mean, you're, you're basically adding to that building. You're adding another filter. You're putting in 2,000 feet of pipe. You're doing a lot of upgrades to the equipment. Unfortunately, that's what's driving the cost up of this. That's all I have. Mr. Dago? Oh, I believe last time this was before us, so to, instead of interconnecting the two wells, if you were to build a separate filtration at the well, it was, it'd be, I don't recall the exact number, but it would be significantly even, higher. Even more. Right. So, so um, it, it's good that you brought it up because one of the things, as Mr. Sear was saying, is we, we broke down the second time we bid this, we kind of broke it apart and we put as just a separate line, a deduct line of the transmission line. So if we, if we did the work at well 1A and the wells a work at 6, and what if we didn't do that? And the, the transmission line itself of this project is only like 800,000. It's the buildings. It's the and, if you, building. and you would, and all that is in the well 6 because you're essentially pumping everything at well 1. So you're basically doubling the it, it, I, I hate to say it, but it's crazy the cost of doing water and sewer projects because it just it's kind of specialized and the equipment is so expensive. So that that's what's driving up this cost. But we looked at that and it definitely bringing the water from 1A to 6 is the way to go. Now you mentioned the uh, the interaction you're going to have to have with the youth sports leagues. Do you know is the pipe going to be currently run down on the school side of the road or is no. it going to be on the field side? Field side. Because one of the things we're actually trying to do is we're trying to solve a problem that the Board of Ed has. That's that road's the Board of Ed. It's Board of Ed property, and um, if if anyone's been down there, there's no drainage there, no. And, and there's a berm there, so the water can't get off. And it's I mean, if you try to bring your kid to a little league game, there's like eight inches of water sitting there, and you just gotta like go up on your tippy toes. So it's gonna the water main is gonna the transmission line is gonna go along the edge of that road. So that's why we need it. Really needs to be shut down. And that's why it couldn't really be done during the school year. Um, it won't take them a tremendous amount of time to go through there, but they do need a four or five week window. And that's where I've already started talking to the league. The youth football doesn't start their games till end of August, but I mean, as the right, you know, parents go.